In the scorching summer of 1996, two ambitious college students from Kennewick, Washington, were taking a leisurely stroll along the tranquil waters of the Columbia River. As they waded through the shallow waters, they stumbled upon a human skull that was partially buried in the riverbank. The students' remarkable discovery sparked a chain of events that would unravel the mysteries of the ancient past. Welcome to Arcane History. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. Where were we? Right, human skull. So the students were shocked by their discovery and didn't know what to do next. However, their instincts kicked in and they immediately notified the local police. The police arrived promptly and the scene was secured. The coroner, Floyd Johnson, arrived at the site, feeling a sense of unease as he gazed upon the unusual skull that had been brought to his attention. Something about it just didn't seem right. Johnson knew he needed expert help to uncover the mystery surrounding this discovery. So he reached out to the renowned local archaeologist, James Chatters, to aid in his investigation. Together, the two men returned to the site, eager to delve deeper into the mystery. With delicate care, they retrieved almost an entire skeleton from the mud and sand. The police department was on high alert when they received the initial call. The report of a possible murder had everyone on edge, and they sprang into action. But as they began their investigation, they soon realized that they were dealing with something much more unusual than they had initially suspected. When Chatters and Johnson finally found the nearly complete skeleton, they were shocked to find that it wasn't from a recent victim, but from something much older. Days of tests and analysis would pass, and it would later be revealed that the bones were 9,000 years old, dating back to a time when the area was a hub of ancient civilization. So started the story of one of the oldest and most interesting skeletons ever found. This skeleton, named Kenwick Man, or the Ancient One, has gained notoriety as the most significant and controversial discovery ever made in North America. As Dr. James Chatters studied the skull, he was immediately taken aback by its unmistakable antiquity. He had never come across a skeleton quite like this one before which was different from the Native American remains he had previously encountered. Initially, he thought the skeleton could belong to a pioneer or trapper. But as he dug further into his examination, the evidence began to challenge his initial assumption. The teeth of the ancient skull revealed a different story. Unlike the cavities commonly found in the teeth of settlers who had a fondness for sugary treats, the absence of such decay indicated that the person's diet was low in sugar and starch. The wear down to the roots of the teeth was a characteristic of prehistoric teeth, further pointing to the great age of the skeleton. The fact that a stone spear point was stuck in the hip bone backed up Chatter's theory that this was an old find. The discovery of Kenwick Man sent shockwaves through the scientific community and Native American tribes. The Uatilla people and other tribes argued that the remains should be returned to them for proper burial as per the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. NAGPRA. This act was established to protect the sacredness of Native American burial sites and to return human remains and cultural objects that were taken from the tribes. However, the archaeologists who studied the bones, James Chatters and Douglas Owsley of the Smithsonian Institution, claimed that the bones were not related to modern Native Americans. They even went as far as to suggest that the remains had features that, that were more similar to those of Polynesian or Southeast Asian peoples, making them exempt from the NAGPRA. This led to a legal battle between the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the scientists, and the Native American tribes, each fighting to claim ownership of the remains. In April 2004, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals stood by its ruling that the remains of the Kennewick Man could not be considered belonging to the Native American population according to NAGPRA. This ruling meant that the responsibility for the care and preservation of the Kennewick Man was left in the hands of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. So, the door was open for scientific research to be done on these bones, which the plaintiffs jumped at the chance to do. In 2013, Dr. Esk Willerslev and his team, who were known for their advanced ways of collecting ancient DNA, were excited to take on the challenge of finding out more about the skeleton's mystery. After putting together the DNA sequence, the scientists compared it to genomes from people all over the world and from people who are still living in the New World. 
The analysis confirmed that Kenwick Man's DNA was indeed Native American. However, this finding was in stark contrast to the shape of his skull, which appeared to be vastly different from that of living indigenous peoples. Dr. Willerslev joined forces with two of the leading experts in the field of skull shapes, Dr. Christoph P. E. Zollikofer and Dr. Marcia S. Ponce de Leon. Together, they set out to explore the paradox of Kenwick Man's ancestry. In their research, the experts found that the head shapes of living Native Americans are diverse and encompass a wide range of variations. To their surprise, Kenwick Man's head shape did not lie outside this range, contradicting previous beliefs. With DNA evidence finally confirming the Kenwick Man's Native American heritage, the tribes that consider him their ancestor were given a path to reclaim his remains. U.S. Senator Patty Murray and Congressman Denny Heck stepped forward to expedite the process by introducing legislation aimed at facilitating the return of the Ancient One to his rightful heirs. Native American communities have long thought of the Kenwick Man as part of their cultural history, so this law was a big win for them. The Kenwick Man finally made his way back home on February 17, 2017. This repatriation was a highly anticipated moment for the tribes, who had been striving for centuries to bring their revered ancestor back to them. The remains were finally laid to rest the next day, on February 18, 2017, in the high desert of the Columbia Plateau, putting an end to over two decades of contentious legal battles and scientific studies. Over 200 people from the five tribes in the Columbia Basin got together at a place that wasn't made public to pay their respects and honor the memory of their ancestor. The discovery of Kenwick Man and other old skeletons has sparked a lot of scientific discussion about where the first Native American people came from. Some people believe that a single group of hunters and gatherers walked across the Bering Land Bridge to America, following big herds of animals. Others believe that there were multiple groups of people who came to America from Asia after the last Big Ice Age. They might have come to America either by walking across the Bering Land Bridge or by sailing from Asia to America. Whether you believe that Kennewick Man was part of a single migration or multiple migrations, one thing is clear. He has provided us with valuable information about the past and the origins of early human populations in the Americas. So, the next time you hear about the Kennewick Man, remember that this discovery is more than just bones. It's a window into the rich history of our ancestors. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel.